Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jerry Cooey. I am Deborah Nelson. Thanks for joining us. And uh, she always says that, but I'm thankful that you join us also. Mediacom Channel 27, every 4.30 to 5. Uh, every Saturday. Every Saturday. Four tell hours. your friends, tell your neighbors, uh, get the link. All of our shows are on YouTube. See it right here. Um, uh, every... Um, Every other day, send it to everybody in your email list, and eventually we'll get worldwide coverage. Yeah. Uh, we do have people in Scotland that watches the show, so um, uh, I think the show continues to grow, and uh, I'm very proud of that. And uh, and let's just, I just want to reiterate it, FBI subpoena, 19 items, we went back and we looked at it, we had actually covered every single item on that subpoena list. Yeah. And nobody else and, did. And on behalf of Deborah, I was recently at a place where there were several other large market media types in the room with uh -huh. me. And uh, I pointed that out to them, that Santa Rosa Week TV Good. had was 19 for 19. Our batting average was 1,000%. Yes. That we, we were on top of it. And I'm guessing a couple of them were zero. Uh, were one to of them after a two and a half hour meeting and being told they wouldn't be allowed to go into the executive committee meeting the door is closing and they say okay when i when i saw that re their report on tv it was basically well some folks talk to each other and maybe they'll work it out this is me on channel three talk to you later mm -hmm. unbelievable well folks um and as we often do, uh, although the name of the show is Santa Rosa Week TV, uh, a lot of things in Escambia County and a lot of things in Walton County uh, also affect us here in Santa Rosa Oklahoma. County. Okaloosa County, I'm sorry. And even Walton County. Yeah, that's right. But uh, we, a um, uh, lot of, lot of uh, ugliness showed up in Escambia County this week. And... Uh, so that, so that uh, everyone will understand, um, Pensacola Chamber is just that. It is the Pensacola Chamber. They have members. Uh, each of those members donate money. They have, a, they have a paid staff, and they have a volunteer board. And uh, just recently, I think he's been here about six months, uh, Mr., uh, Mr. Heiser, is, uh, he's the president now. He's, he's the top paid man. Yes. And uh, uh, under the umbrella, and this is all legalese, folks, but just so you'll understand it, under the umbrella of the Pensacola Chamber is the TDC, Tourist the Tourist Development, Tourist Council. Development Council. And uh, one, one thing that I will have to say about uh, Mr. Heiser, first of all, he's not from here, and that's a good thing. Mm. <laughs> Second of all, on one of the first contracts that that they looked at for some PR work. Uh, he insisted that it be done in a open process, an mm -hmm. RFP, and that all comers would get an opportunity no, to just bid it out. Bid it out. Yeah. And we don't um, like that around here. <laughs> we don't like bidding things out. Yeah. And uh, uh, so he did that on a much smaller contract. Well, apparently it it, it started it's been brewing for a while and, and folks the next thing you you know and certainly I'll give credit uh, I and weekly Rick Alson and I got a chance I actually met Mr. Alson this this week so that was that was nice he was at the meeting he's actually a board member of the Pensacola Chamber uh, he covered all the letters uh, the the emails that were flying back and forth Pensacola News Journal wrote about them but, you know certainly give them credit but it's a series of very very ugly emails including Grover Robinson, who is a county commissioner and a member of the TDC. Now, folks, I'll tell you, hands down, point blank, the TDC in Escambia County, just like the TDC in Santa Rosa County, in every county in the state of Florida, it's a state position. It's required. It's written right. into the legislature. Every county in the state of Florida has a TDC. And it has to have a board and the whole structure's there. And they are sunshine, period, end of story. And they're usually funded by bed taxes. Usually funded by bed taxes. In fact, and more than funded by it, they would have the authority to decide where the bed tax money goes. Right. So under the, under the current rates, so, so all of these emails have been flying uh, over the weekend. Uh, 
some of it was pretty ugly stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I on it, honestly, I'm certainly not a lawyer, but in my humble opinion, I saw some things that Grover Robinson wrote that wouldn't surprise me if he doesn't wind up having to hire a lawyer to defend. Mm -hmm. I mean, he called one fella a parasite. Mm -hmm. So that, that there was a lot of a lot of ugliness. Well, he's entitled to his opinion, but I see what you're saying. <laughs> Might not have been the wisest thing to express. <laughs> exactly. So, uh, you know, folks, uh, look, I've said this many times. I'm a harmless little fuzzy fella who just likes to ask a question every now and then. So um, I decided to uh, load up the camera and go see what's going to happen at the, at the chamber meeting. And um, it, the, 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 the fun part of it was, is, uh, I don't know, I didn't actually count his, but 25 or 30 people, and three or four of them was apologizing to the nth degree, and some of them was sitting there not accepting their apology, and some of them was singing Kumbaya, can't we all just get along? Please the, don't cut the money supply they, off. They were, they, were uh, they, they, they worked in the Rodney King line, yeah. uh, can't we just all get along? Yeah. And keep the money supply and, coming. And, and keep the yeah. money coming. But, but one of the things that, that I learned in all of that was a PR firm in Escambia County, Bullock Company, mm -hmm. which had been doing a lot of the work for the TDC. Apparently. Um, I, I was kind of shocked to learn that since 2006, yeah. to date, they've never had to bid for one penny that they got, and, and it's exceeded $6 million. Well, $6 million and they never have to bid, they must do a really good job. I wonder how many jobs the chamber has created, facilitated since that, well, that time. Well, I, you know, I, I just, you know, that part of it was, um, was... Eye-opening? Uh, yeah, yeah, the eye-opening to say the They least. do similar, it's similar things as to, as what happens here, but the money amounts are... We're a little bit smaller in the dollar amounts. Well, they're larger, right, they're much larger in, in Scambia in many right. cases, like, way bigger. Right. Well, you know, what, what, and a lot of stuff that happens under the table here, they just will just outright do it in a county commission meeting over there. They're not as they're they're right. not as good about. Well, you you know, like and and, and, and we and we've talked about it on this show. You know, folks. For 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 example, there was a hundred seventy thousand dollar military uh, grant uh, here. military affairs in in Santa Rosa yeah. County that that leads one to ask a lot of questions. There was a federal grant for uh, uh, the the uh, workforce uh, development. Workforce development. Yeah. Uh, there was another grant, federal grant for a military affairs position that was handled very questionably, but but certainly our dollar, our total dollar value is much smaller than yes. Escambia County, right. and part of that's due to the population, and yeah. and they have more hotel rooms, and mm -hmm. and there's more more opportunities for bed taxes to come right. in than than we have. But but what you had is uh, the the vice president of the chamber um, seemed to, and this is just my humble opinion. I'm just sitting here watching it, folks. But uh, he had started working with the TDC a little bit, and uh, he apparently wasn't including the president, Mr. Heiser, in what was going on. So, so the so the vice president yeah. is um, moving. Apparently, he's had conversations with the TDC group, and uh, Mr. Heiser became aware of that and and put him on paid leave, and then that's when all of this really very public exchange took place. And then, of course, they did. Uh, Monday uh, the, 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 on that Monday just happened to be the regular meeting, and of course they tried to uh, defuse and deflate and deflect and all of those things at the beginning of the meeting. Yeah. And uh, so it, um, uh, you know, three or four fellas really apologizing and groveling and, you know, it, it wasn't meant to be. Please don't take it that way. And um, uh, it was, it was kind of interesting, you know, they, they, they just, you know, kept kicking it around and pleading, well, can't, can't we... Can we? Can we we need to move on. We need to move on. Uh, uh, you know the, the the VP. He didn't mean anything by it. You know, please, please take have mercy on him. And it was. Uh, the, but the other part, and 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 uh, we're we're gonna have some of that some of that video so you can see it, folks. But 
Um, some of the other stuff that occurred, and I want to I want to take a couple of minutes to talk about that. It was just like sitting at a Team Santa Rosa meeting. Yeah. That was a fellow that stood up and said, you know, project doorknob, so many jobs, project end table, so many jobs, project end dust, so many jobs, project carpet, so many mm -hmm. jobs. And oh, by the way, we worked so hard at this, we found three companies that were fixing to leave, so we've exercised emergency procedures to try to keep keep them there. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it was it was kind of kind of the same thing. Now I did see a couple things that I really thought was uh, good. Uh, some of the younger members of the chamber, kind of the the, the, the up and comers, they set a goal to go visit 175 businesses a month. It's good to have goals. They actually make a personal visit, and uh, I know it's it, it, we 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 are pretty critical of how things are done in Santa Rosa County. That's what Pat Lockhart used to do at Team Santa Rosa. Yes. She yes. used to go have the face-to-face. -face. Yes. And it was kind of interesting to me that here in Scammy County, that is one thing that I think they're, that they're, they're doing right. Uh, one thing that confused me in the meeting, uh, Ferd Solomon, Dave Hoaxing at a Pensacola Chamber meeting. Uh, maybe they were there. Is Team Santa Rosa board members? Well, the chairman. Yeah. And the and the uh, uh, chairman elect, yeah, both at a at a city of Pensacola. Did they, make, did they speak? Well, they well they did, and um, and uh, um, was kind of funny. I thought it was the understatement of the year. Um, what they say, Mr. Ferd Solomon? He said, "Well, as you all know, we are working through some issues." Yes. It's Santa Rosa County. Like an FBI subpoena, <laughs> list, laundry list. Yeah, and a five million dollar lawsuit. Yeah. Uh, they actually found that to be pretty humorous, kind of the group in general, and and they thanked him for keeping them out of the press for a while. Okay. Uh, but it, I, 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 I you know, uh, if if we are regularly having our head people over there, uh, you, you know, you're just not going to convince me any different. This is this this is a competitive situation here, and I believe we need to focus on Santa Rosa County. We need to take care of the businesses that are here, and I think we need to eat a few less ham sandwiches in other folks' county. Just that's my humble opinion. And I just really am still questioning what exactly it is that either Team Santa Rosa or the Pensacola Chamber have done for any businesses right. in this area and or employment in general. I just want to know what they've done. Well, I'm not. I'm not seeing it. You you will get your op opportunity on uh, October the sixth to see what Team Santa Rosa. That's has when done. they're having their little workshop. Right, so and please don't fire us. And um, uh, uh, folks, I want you to pay attention now. I, 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 I'm in hopes. Uh, currently, the meeting is scheduled for 9 a.m. on October the sixth. Uh, there is a uh, there is a move and there is discussion as we speak that that meeting be moved to a nighttime meeting because at least three of the commissioners believe that the citizens in the community ought to have some in right. input into that session. Since it's a public input session <laughs> and everything. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And uh, so um, uh, stay tuned on that one. You know, check your sources. If it does wind up being a 6 p.m. meeting, uh, absolutely please if you can possibly be in attendance on October the 6th at the uh, County Commission Chambers to discuss the fate of Team Santa Rosa I would appreciate it if you would uh, show up and um, so I you know I, we, we, we're, we're going to show you a, a, a good portion of the videotape I, I think it's important kind of compare and contrast it'll It'll kind of show you kind of how similar little situations occur between our county. Uh, you know, Scammy County is not a whole lot different in the same things that go on here. Now, at the, um, at the end of the meeting, I did ask the head man. I, you know, I said, it seems there's some concerns of the Sunshine Law, but if the chamber doesn't follow the Sunshine Laws, what does it matter? And uh, he did tell me that the TDC does right. follow the Sunshine Right, they have to, law. but the Chamber has uh, 
claimed that they don't believe they're subject right. to Sunshine Law, and nobody's ever challenged them um, officially. On well, it. you're probably sitting beside a fellow who's going to challenge yeah. them. Yeah. I, I will tell you this: that I have learned enough about Mr. Heiser that whether he has to follow it or not, he believes it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Well, he's um, one of the probably standing alone in that. I, I, and I'm yeah. sure he is. And and and, and they have, they get millions. I mean, there a lot of money goes through the Pensacola Chamber to quote yes. unquote um, facilitate an economic development for Escambia County. And uh, I think Pen City of Pensacola gives them some too. I'm not positive. Right. So. So. Uh, Folks, you know, stay tuned. Uh, it, it, it appears to me that uh, uh, the winds of change are blowing in Santa Rosa County. It looks like it is sweeping across the Scamia field and working its way to downtown Pensacola as we speak. And I don't agree. I think they're just finding new places to hide the money. And people are just going to have to figure out which rocks to, to, to overturn in the future. It's going to be different rocks. Well, I understand. And, and only, you know, I read a lot of stories about the FBI. But normally they remove all oh, the yeah. rocks from an area. Oh, yes, indeed. They do. So there really won't be a place to hide. That, that's so, let's hope so. Folks, we'll see how that works out. Enjoy the rest of the show. I'm Jerry Cooey. I'm Deborah Nelson. Thanks for watching. Good night. Recently, there was some discussion that came up through the experiences that... TDC Chairman Dennis McKinnon and uh, that Schroeder had and Commissioner Grover Robinson and the State Governor's Office uh, and uh, BP and oil spill relief. Issues that because of the way that we are structured with our chamber and TDC tax CDB management structure hindered our ability to be competitive for and timely in seeking relief funds uh, for tourism. It, uh, because of that, there's been some recent dialogue that we discuss as a community the governance of the CBP. Uh, this was all done in the open. It was mentioned in public meetings, which uh, has not been picked up by the press, unfortunately. But uh, uh, there was no intent to take anything away from the chamber. It was just the open dialogue. And I think that's something that you all should understand. Again, if you would like to read the details, the history of all of these initiatives, I'd be happy to provide you with a copy of that. It's just too lengthy to, to read to you at this point in time. We appreciate your understanding, and it is our hope that we can move forward in a much more productive fashion than we have been able to do so over the past week. Dennis? Um, and there were some mistakes made, I would tell you, on my part. One is uh, not calling Jim, uh, myself, and I uh, later earlier, I apologize to Jim for that. Um, I've always been a military guy, and I kind of go in a hierarchy, a uh, chain of command. Um, and I did talk to Collier about coming here, but, but never went to Jim. And so I think that's probably created some of the issues that we have here today, and I apologize to him for that. But as we move forward, you know, our first meeting we had, you know, we said, let's look see what is it that we actually need to do here, what do we need to accomplish. Uh, we met for about 30 minutes or so, had a subsequent meeting uh, and decided that we really need to look at what the other forms of governance for CDBs were that were out there within our state. Um, and then we made the decision at that point we really need to be talking to Collier and we need to get in front of you uh, to talk about creating a study to look to see what is the best way uh, for conducting CDB business uh, within a county. Um, I'll real quick, I'm not going to tell you all pros and cons of things because I think the study will tell us that better. Uh, but I'll tell you that really are four major models out there that, that are operated within our uh, state. Uh, one is certainly the current way we do it today. Um, as Collier said earlier, you know, we're the largest metropolitan area that does it the way we do it. Doesn't mean it's good or bad, it's just that is, that is a fact. Uh, another way to do it would be for the CDB to come out from under the chamber and actually be a part of the county government. Uh, a third way would be for it to become a tourism authority uh, within our community. And lastly, uh, for it to be its own standalone uh, operation outside of any other entity that's out there. Uh, the, the most prevalent one throughout our state is a standalone entity. Uh, it allows private partnerships and private donations into it to help build the tourism uh, marketing. Um, I don't advocate one way or the other on any of the four. Team Santa Rosa, is it Fern or Dave now? Uh, it's me. Well, uh, we've had some some issues that we're dealing with. I would say we're almost as entertaining as this chamber. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, we're going to work through those. We, uh, I appreciate that. One of those. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Collier takes some of the heat off of The more you can be on the front page, we appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, we've got uh, one of the big issues is it's going to be a review of how we do business, and we look forward to that. I think that's going to be very healthy for the entire county, and uh, I feel confident that we're uh, going to do the right thing. We're going to try and stay off the front page. Yeah, we appreciate it. When do y'all uh, officially switch over? Uh, the 20th. It's an all-members meeting, I think, is on the 20th. We, we of course, it. are <coughs> looking at Donnie will be invited. But uh, you're still in. So, you mean until October 1st? Then you're still in. We'll 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 Number one, it's great to see the hospitality industry come together on something. You know, when when Dave and I can sit in the same room at the same time, everybody should pay attention. So uh, we're here together to represent, uh, like Carlin said, a tremendous part of our economy. And uh, we'd like for y'all to pay attention to that, if you will. And um, uh, the idea of a study, to me, is uh, something that I have a hard time dealing with. I think we know what's best for us. And we represent the, the hospitality industry at large, it's not just a select few. So um, uh, perhaps uh, something that's not costly, we don't need to take any more money out of our funds to go study what we think we already know. Uh, there are a very few uh, options available to us. Um, I think your constituents are telling you we want to make uh, this uh, a, a, an event that we pay attention to. and, and um, I think we just need to move down the road, get it out of personalities and into the business, and uh, see what we can do to make ourselves better. Thank you, Julie. Um, before we go to questions, if we want to have some, um, what we said, the executive committee, um, the other study is going to go back to TDC and see um, what they wanted to do as far as the study. But Julian says it's not necessary. But the study, um, see what he came back with. Our position on the executive committee, and I think the full board, I think they will encourage we're what's best for us. And what, um, you know, the hotel you said before, if they've got a better way to put heads and beds, it's good for us as well. And uh, we're not going to stand in that way. And I think it's run pretty well while it's been underneath uh, the chamber. Uh, we are the largest, uh, as I said, in Florida that runs it this way. And, uh, so far, it's been running well. If there's a better way to do it, though, we're, we are uh, want to. Uh, we see that with open arms. And um, so we're all ears. And if the study is what they like us to participate, we participate. If there's a better way they come to us, we are not going to. Uh, if there's a better way to do tourism, we're not going to stand away. And if I'm not speaking on behalf of the board, somebody speak up. Um, all right, we have any questions here while we're still on the study? Oh, I just want to emphasize. Dallas uh, Bullock. Um, this has always been a no. I want to emphasize that. Uh, we were scheduled to come here today to the executive committee to begin the dialogue about this issues uh, before us. Unfortunately, Mr. Kaiser was not aware of that, and that has created a lot of misunderstanding over the past week. And it's, uh, we apologize for that. It's unfortunate. We apologize to all of you for that. But um, I'm confident, and those of us involved are confident, uh, that this initiative has been moving forward with absolute integrity and openness. And uh, if you have any questions about that, I think we can demonstrate that to you and document the you know, chain of events over the recent months that have led us to where we are today. The um, Allison Network. I had a question in that the DFQ Chamber has been at the um, TDC to request funding repeatedly and historically has been one of three agencies TDC is recognized as accountable and responsible. Uh, we have a VIC that employs three people full time, two part time, and um, the description that I received firsthand said that VICs would go away. And um, I would like to know if this was indeed an effort to discover what was best for tourism for all of Escambia County, why one of the three players, and two of them were at the table, apparently based on what I've read in the paper, Mr. Palmer with PSA was involved, uh, Mr. Schrader was involved, but no one in Pretty Key was ever contacted whatsoever on the subject. I'll answer that, Perdido Key. 
uh, you know, this, in all this, there's never been a discussion of anybody going to jail. Um, I, I don't know who you talked to, um, but look at me, and I've never said those words that somebody's going away. Um, and so, from that standpoint, you know, nobody was left off. Ed was only there simply as a, a resource because of his extensive background uh, with the TDC and with the tourism uh, marketing. Um, Ray was there because Ray has recently done some uh, uh, studies uh, out in California and some other places on tourism where he went with civic centers and with others. Um, and so he had something specific that I thought might come into play down the road. Um, and, and going to, the, to the, the preconceived notion that it's going to be set up anyway, I don't have one. Um, I, I don't think anybody has one. That's why I advocate this. I know Julian doesn't like it, but I think we've got to look at a study on it. I think we've got to figure out how the best way to do it. Now, if some study comes back and says all the VICs go away and, and that's what's best for the community, uh, then you know I think we've got to take ourselves out of being protectionism or protectionists for our own organizations. If it's best for the community, as Carter said, I think that's what we've got to do. Um, now, if it comes back and says, keep doing just exactly what you're doing today, then let's keep doing exactly what we're doing today. Um, I don't have, and I don't think anybody that's, that's talking about it has a preconceived notion that, of what it's going to look like. Um, because I, I simply don't know. There's four different models out there that I just think we've got to look at all of them and see what's the best way to do it. And, that, and Allison also, pretty OT, did have representatives at the table on the debt tax management issue when it began in 2008. The players out there have changed since then. And this was not really implemented until this year. That has been a hotelier-driven initiative. And the hotelier who does have interest on Pretty OT is in a spree. Uh, and so it's not as if we are not recognizing for DOT in our initiative to straighten out the bed tax management matters that have been the primary focus of this group over the last three, three years and got delayed a while during the oil spill and all that, but got re-engaged with uh, over the recent months that they've outlined earlier. So, 2008? Was when this began? Three years ago, and since then, um, nobody's been at the table from Purdue. No, there was people at the table then when John Panko was the tax chairman. He was the one that initiated the initial efforts to deal with the county commission on bed tax management issues. Uh, one across is one that comes out that was involved in those discussions at that time.